Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome to the Recycle and Assemblage Art YouTube Hop. I'm really excited to be part of this hop because I really love assembling different projects. And today I'm going to be working on this. This is an old shadow box that I'm going to be putting some very special treasures that you can actually see inside. I know it might look like junk, but this is a very special treasure of my father-in-law that he asked me to decorate the box to be able to put it inside and keep it as a momentum. Um, there's two items here and they're very meaningful to him. It's an old hook that was handmade by his father who passed away many years ago. And the second one is actually a bomb shred that he unfortunately he had to experience that got embedded in, in his knapsack when he was at war many years ago. So this is something that to remind him of things and I thought it would be a perfect thing to use for this assemblage video. Um, there are six artists that have videos today and you can go ahead and hop along between the different artists. They all each made their own unique assemblage video and it's really nice to just see everybody's amazing projects as they're all from different parts of the world. So all you have to do is just hop along. As I'm creating the project, I will explain what kind of things we were asked to do in order to create this assemblage project. Some of the things that I love most is to actually collect lots of little knickknacks from everywhere. And I love just putting them in this box and then going through them. So there's things that are recycled here, like, you know, this uh, soda little knickknack that you open the soda with to things that my grandmother gave me all the way to things that I've bought before and I just mix them all the metal things together there's earrings and there's old necklaces and just little bits and bobs that I find really helpful there is even this old handle that I just you know we I took off something so I thought we could I could use so what I like to do is kind of pick a bunch of things that are really special that I could include in this box since this is kind of like a relic that I'm going to be using and going to be adding things to I really want to include lots of different things I even have like an old belt, belt buckle and so I don't really know what to choose but I'm going to just choose a lot of things from here once I choose them I am going to be adding them to this box now I find it very hard to be able to Kind of assemble everything on the side so the main thing i want to show you is once i pick the products and once i pick the little bits and bobs that i want to put on i want to like basically glue them on and then show you one by one why i placed it in this area and what i did with it because it's really hard to kind of do the whole thinking process in advance and sometimes that takes too long so once i glue everything i will show you what i chose and why i chose it and where i placed it so that I'm going to do off screen just because I think it's just a little bit easier and then I will get started with the rest. Another thing that I found in a box is these old watch parts that I think are amazing. I actually acquired them a long time ago and I've never used them in a project. And what I like about them is that they have the still some of the gears and I'm supposed to include a movable part on the project itself so this is the it's going to be my movable part where the gears move a little bit i don't obviously not going to use all of these i'm just going to pick one of them and all the gears kind of move so it's really cool so i haven't really decided i kind of have to play around with things if i have to pick some pieces to that fit nicely on the box so i really want to make this a really beautiful treasure box from my father-in-law i also ended up adding some painter's tape to the glass just because somehow the glass wasn't removable on this frame so i want to make sure that i protect it from any paints that i'm going to be adding or any mediums that i'm going to be adding onto the frame so i'm doing this and protected the glass and i also went ahead and added a paper in the back this is an old paper from an old collection from scrapbooking i just cut it and traced it to this size and then I took the two pieces that you can see the piece of bomb shred and the hook and I used some heavy body gel which is a really heavy gel and basically you can glue anything even if it's really heavy because this is a very heavy metal and you see it's pretty quite thick so all I did is just use a little palette knife 
and I just applied it to the different areas and just let it sit there and dry. Now it's fully dried. So it took a couple of hours to dry completely. I'm going to use the same gel to basically glue all the bits and bobs to the frame itself. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And then I'm going to show you what I glued. Before I actually add anything, I forgot that I want to cover everything in black gesso so I can add the beautiful metallic colors later. So in order to facilitate that, I am going to first just paint the frame in black. So that makes it easier when I'm going to be adding everything else. So it's just quickly adding a black to the sides and to the front, being careful obviously where the painter tape is. Even though it's there, I just want to make sure that I don't get it on the glass. The nice thing about gesso, I mean, it can be removed with water and cleaned, but it's much harder that way. So it's easier to just get it done well the first time around. But at least I have this painter's tape to protect me because I do want to get inside the edges of, um, of the frame so it all looks pretty even. So then when I remove the painter's tape, it will be like as if I didn't ha do any damage to it. So I'm just going to paint all around. This is a quick coat of black gesso. This is a pretty heavy gesso, so I don't need to do two coats or anything to this. Just, just finish it up. Okay, so here I'm finishing it up. Now you could paint all the embellishments in black as well, but because I don't know which ones I'm going to be using, I will probably paint in once they're glued onto the background. If you do know exactly which things you're going to use, it is usually easier to just paint them in black beforehand and then glue them onto the background. So I got another idea while I was drying this black gesso. And my, my father-in-law is a very huge fixer-upper. He loves fixing things. He loves using tools. He has millions and millions of tools in his garage. So I really thought that making a theme of like tools and metals and kind of making it uh, really specific to him would be a great idea. And I remember that I have these brackets that my husband gave me. They were from um, some furniture or something. I don't even know what they're from, but they're like old brackets. And what I thought is that I could basically add them to the project. So I thought to kind of add them like this. And if they stick out a little bit, that's okay as well. So these ones can go here. And then I can have these other ones on the sides here, one on each side of the edges. So it will really look like it's tool oriented. I also grabbed a few uh, nuts and bolts and some nails and screws because I just don't know what I'm going to add. But what I'm going to do is I'm also going to paint these in black gesso so they're already prepped for afterwards. So I painted all the brackets in black so that way I can glue them directly onto the onto the box and but I'm only going to glue these ones the front ones first only because these side ones are going to be harder to glue on the sides they need to kind of be balanced and make sure that they stay on otherwise they'll fall so those will be done at the end and I'm not doing anything on the side beside these brackets. Maybe I'll hold them together with something, but we'll see. But the main ones I want to glue are these. And I also painted this handle. It's an old handle. I painted it to add to the top of the case. Just to show you how I'm going to be gluing all the embellishments today, I am going to be adding the heavy body gel on the back of each of the embellishments, including the ones from the side and the handle and basically all of them. So just to show you what I do, I take a little bit of a, I take a palette knife or just anything that I could get my hands on to use. And I'm gonna put it in the back of this. Now I know that this is kind of sticking out, so I'm not gonna put it on the outside rim just because I wanna make sure that it doesn't stick out from underneath. So I'm just going to put it in the inside of the edge. You can also put it, obviously apply it directly on the box itself as well. Now you want to put a pretty decent amount so it sticks well to it. This gel will literally hold anything, but you really need to um, put enough that it does hold onto the other area. This is takes about 24 hours to fully dry but 
I usually work in stages so that works as well too so then all I do is do this and I'm going to place it here now if anything sticks out I'm gonna clean it up afterwards so the glue obviously will stick out from the different areas and that's okay as you can see here I can just run my finger there or you can use a paintbrush for that as well and that's basically as I said I wanted to for this to kind of stick out and you can also grab like a little paintbrush for example something like this and just clean inside the hole so that works well as well so to make sure you're you're not um, you don't have that gloopy, goopiness of glue in the middle um, this same thing you can actually use this to clean the glue in different areas so that way it matches the rest so I'm going to glue the other one as well and this is the same method I'm going to use with all the embellishments on this box okay so I finished gluing basically all the pieces that I wanted I did leave some blank space because I don't really always want to cover everything and what I did is I added this little bottle because one of the things that we were doing for this hop is we had to include the word recycle in it. It could be hidden or it could be somewhere on the actual uh, work. But because it's not really fitting my theme so much, I am going to use this paper and I'm going to basically put this message inside the bottle. I love putting little messages inside bottles. This bottle is also recycled. It's from a vet clinic. It's the ones they use to put injections to dogs and it's the vials that carry the, the stuff inside. So I figure this would be nice. It's also a recycled piece and it has the little peeps inside that says recycle. Now, the other thing was to use obviously as many recycled pieces as we can and also to include some movable parts. So as I said before, this is movable right here this also kind of moves this one moves also as well and then what i did is actually included these old hinges here if you can see you could actually open these up and close them back together there's one on each side now i don't want to move them too much because the glue is still wet as you can see everything is still wet i'm just kind of um playing around with it and i glued everything to the background so obviously i have the brackets the ones that were in the triangular shape they are already glued these i'm going to glue after including the handle at the top but i want to talk a little bit about the other pieces and why i included them here so because this is a keepsake kind of box i really thought it would be a nice thing to incorporate something like a clock or a watch or something like that to you know symbolize time so hence the old watch part this is an old stopwatch like the casing of it and this was an old watch part as well that comes in a in a, like different sets I bought a baggie full of them I also have an old um, door part I mean this is where the lock goes and I also have an old tool and some other little tools over here now I have obviously some screws and some bolts and some nuts and many different washers and of course this bottle that I said and the reason why I incorporated so many tools and so many things is because this is for as I said my father-in-law and there's two th reasons for that one of them is because my father-in-law always saves all these things for me he loves using tools and he fixes a lot of things in my house so one of the things is to symbolize the way he helps s fixing all the things so for example he's taken off a door once from our from our house to like you know remove it and this is the door the door part that was on it and also to symbolize all the tools that he uses I thought that would be very nice for the keepsake and also I want to say that the reason why I'm using all these nuts and bolts because he actually gave me those they actually he cleans up his garage every once in a while and ends up giving me all these like little things and here I see there's some holes here I am thinking that maybe I will add a couple more little screws in here just to kind of cover them and then I'll be done so now I have to let this dry this is going to dry overnight I'm not going to touch it because I really want this to be fully fully dry before I add any paint or any gesso or anything on it and I'm going to be obviously paint all of it in black gesso so I'm just going to add those two little 
screws over here and then I'm going to let everything dry. Okay, now that I have the actual sides glued, I did the handle here at the top and I put some screws on it. And, um, and then I'm just going to basically cover everything in black gesso again. So basically all the embellishments, because now they're, they're very tight on and they're glued perfectly on. So I just want to make sure that I put everything in black. Therefore, I can add the other colors afterwards. So I'm just going to start covering and obviously I'm going to show you every detail of it, but it's basically the same thing that I already did. Just covering the embellishments before I cover the sides. And uh, this is what I meant by if you want to do this ahead of time, you can. But as you can see, I don't really know which embellishments I'm going to add until it's on it because I need to look at balance and stuff like that. But I am going to talk a little bit about composition because that's something that I couldn't show you, at least not my train of thought. So usually what I like to do is to have a large piece of of something some kind of eye-catching thing right here in the middle and then it needs to balance itself out with the other side which is also has to have a big piece or some kind of big embellishment that way the eyes balanced on both eyes are balanced on both sides so the only thing you have left is to look in the middle so yes you're going to look at all the details and all the embellishment and it's going to look really nice but what you mainly want to do is focus your eyes on the main thing which is the whatever you're putting in the box. So it, this is a different type of composition because you're trying to make the eyes look away from the sides, even though it has so many embellishments. So this is why you need to kind of balance both sides. And usually I like anchoring something with by putting something large at the bottom and smaller things at the top. Um, Obviously, you should really always do whatever you like the most. I mean, things that you like and you can include things in your projects that are meaningful to you. That's what's important to make sure that you do things that are meaningful to you, not or to the person that you're making it for. So that's the main idea. And that way you make it really easy. So it's really easy to just create something that will be like that. So I am going to just finish adding all the black everywhere so that way it gives an even coat to the background so I can have the same thing everywhere. The reason why I say that is because these things are usually made of different materials and different consistencies. So by adding the black gesso, you make them all even. You make everything the same and then when you're adding the paint or the wax or whatever you're adding on top, it will be pretty even. The final step is to add color and I wanted to add three of my favorite colors from the Prima Finaber waxes. These are the Art Alchemy waxes in Mint Sparkle, Peacock and the Firebird which I add afterwards. These have been my favorite, my two favorite colors this year and I'm going to be using these blending brushes. They're kind of like stipple brushes. They're pretty hard and they're really amazing to add this with. I am going to put this sideways so that way it's much easier for you to see and I'm going to open them up maybe on this side I'm thinking. And one of the tricks that I have in order to be able to add these properly is that I actually warm them up with my heat tool. So what I do is I take a little bit of, I take my heat tool and I just add it on top just to kind of melt the wax and these are very soft waxes and they look beautifully on. Then all I do is just start adding them to the background. So I'm first adding this one, which is the mint sparkle. And I also can add the peacock blue. Sometimes I just hold them in my hand. I find that easier. So I basically add this everywhere. And I go back and forth between the colors. These two colors look amazing together. And I just love the way it looks. So it's really easy to just apply them everywhere. And you just basically blend the two colors. So I take one and then the other and I blend them together. 
Now you could use just the, you could use just one color. You don't have to use both, but I do like the effect of both of them being used together. And obviously, I have to make sure that I do the sides as well. So what I do is I turn things around just to make sure that I get all sides of the of the project. Plus, I'm going to turn it on its side and do the edges as well. Another trick is to take a small brush and just get into inside the little grooves where the bigger brush doesn't fit. It helps as well. So that's another trick I like doing. So I even turn it around just because I wanted to make sure that the back is still covered as well. So all these pieces here on the side. So it looks, but even though technically nobody will see them when you hang this, it still looks nice if you just match it to the background as if they're kind of sticking out. Now it's time to add the other color, which is the Firebird color. And that really brings it all together. And this one I like adding with my finger, kind of adding just highlights of it in certain areas, basically at the top of most of the embellishments, because it makes it look more vintage, more realistic. And if there's some areas that I can reach, I can always use a paintbrush for that. So these colors look so nice together. It's right up here. It looks very mechanical. And then all I have to do is just remove the painter's tape, which I'm going to do right now. So this is it and I'm going to add the inside and it looks really, really cool. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit of this. This is like the brushed iron. I think I'm using a little bit of yellow. Yeah, it looks really cool. It looks makes it a little bit mechanical looking. And there we go. The only other thing I did is I added a dangling watch, a little clock at the end of this hinge that can be moved up and down, obviously, and so does this, and it will dangle on when you when you put it on. So it's hard to see because when you stand it, it looks perfect, but when you're lying it down, it just falls. But this is basically it for the project. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friend, and I hope you love it and hop along with the rest of the assemblage hop. You're going to enjoy all the amazing projects because there's some really unique projects as well. So I hope you enjoyed and hop along. Have an amazing day. Bye.